every residency is different and yours certainly introduced us to a lot of new people. Um, and what I'd love to know from you is what do you feel like was the, you know, what were the, the best results from your work with Grace Cathedral? I guess uh, there were, first of all, I have to say a little bit about the process that uh, uh, it, there was something kind of community, uh, communal about it. We did feel like we were kind of, or I, I certainly did, I think Jim too, felt like we were kind of entering into a community. Because we were talking to you, we were talking to Rebecca, we were talking to John, we were talking to Malcolm, we were talking to a lot of people. And um, so there was, and of course I actually physically lived uh, there. So, so that was right. one that I really liked, was the notion of entering into a community and working within that, that community. Um, the other good thing I think that came out of it, uh, uh, or the best thing, and Jim and I were talking about this earlier, is that, you know, in a way, there are at least two different kinds of artworks that you know we've been involved in, and there are some that the public really like, and there are others where the public, you know, <laughs> maybe scratches their head and so on. So, it was really nice to have one that the public really liked, and that's of course Jacob's Dream. I think people really uh, came, you know, it seemed to nourish people, and people spontaneously really seemed to, you know, to really like it and get something from it. And that's something you can't foresee. And so that I'm really, you know, thankful for. And, and, and uh, it doesn't always happen. Um, Jim, what, what was it for you? Um, I would second that. I mean, having worked in a number of, uh, if you want to call this a public art project, which it really is kind of, um, it really was a unique experience for me and for Benjamin also in that, um, everyone was kind of on board and supportive and that was so great because that usually doesn't happen. Um, and for me also, clearly when you finish a, a work and uh, people are generally responding positively, I didn't, act, I it's probably the first time I've ever done a work that no one came up to me and said, you know, I have a lot of problems with this work. I, you, I'm sure you've heard that, but uh, I haven't heard that. Um, and so it's just nice to have it uh, be a relatively subtle work, um, kind of in a, almost in a corner and still have people notice it and respond to it without it taking over the whole um, cathedral. Yeah, I think that's an important thing. I think it really found its place uh, in the cathedral. We've been talking about that a lot as a community over years now, just how perfectly placed it is. I mean, it's part of the cathedral and not part of every experience necessarily, even though it's really present because of the really wonderful job that you did in, in specifically citing it. Um, and then going back, when have the two of you collaborated before? Can you tell us a little bit more you know, about the work you've done prior to 2015 when you started the project at Grace Cathedral? Um, it's been a long time. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Benjamin, I'll let you talk about Sans Peace, though. I actually don't think that, that that's necessarily the first time, but you, that probably makes the most sense. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I guess uh, uh, we, we are in the danger of saying that our collaborations are only take places in cathedrals uh, because uh, <laughs> we, uh, one of our you know, main, uh, we two previous big works that we did were, was in the saint Sulpice Cathedral, which is one meter smaller than Notre Dame. Um, so it's a, even though it's not, big, you know, a, a cathedral um, uh, as such, it's a, it's a cathedral size. And there we did a, um, a couple of pieces that were very similar to Miracle Fragments, uh, working with light and with, with the, uh, the architecture. Uh, beautiful. Thanks. Yeah. And before that, I know you've had a really long relationship. Um, I love telling the story of, you know, how far back you go together and people really like hearing about that. So why can you tell that story a little bit about, 
I think you met at MIT. Um, I was uh, undergraduate taking some uh, in engineering, electrical engineering, which is what I did for 20 years and um, also what my degree was in from MIT. Um, trying to expand myself a little bit and <laughs> look at the arts a bit, um, in particular filmmaking. And Benjamin was, um, ended up being my teacher. I think you were a graduate student at the time um, in film and video. And so he started out that he was my teacher. Uh, and as you can imagine, um, when you have a student like Jim. <laughs> I was wondering about that. Like from his first work that, whoa, <laughs> um, this is somebody who's very special. And it became a friendship, it was great. Um, and actually back and forth over the years, uh, uh, we've not only had a conversation about our pieces, but there, there have actually been some pieces that uh, uh, we have kind of aimed at each other. And uh, there's one piece like Commute, for example, which I dedicated to him. And so um, it, it was a really, at least for me, this kind of unique, beautiful, friendly uh, dialogue between two between artists. Yeah. And we're, we've kind of stayed interested, I guess I would say, in similar, similar things with regard to art and what, um, both in terms of um, kind of media, the media that we use, and also what we're trying to express with that media. So we've kind of stayed on similar paths, though we certainly have our disagreements at times. Uh, it does. <laughs> well, how, how did that familiar dance um, create Jacob's dream? And, and how did that dance come into the process of, of creating it? Uh, we knew right away that we wanted to do something very simple. And pretty early on, given that we didn't want to do something uh, very small, we started thinking about the vertical scale of the cathedral. And um, that was kind of the beginning of the process. Those were kind of almost the initial parameters. And clearly having both of us worked with light a darker space like the cathedral, um, particularly with the uh, only light typically being from the stained glass or the only light felt, um, it seemed like a, a perfect place to do a color, light, simple work. And I, I was struck, and to talk about the verticality for a second, by the fact that, you know, if you look at Grace Cathedral, it's basically Notre Dame, but kind of scrunched up, you know, like elongated. Um, That's right. And it's actually an, an imitation of Notre Dame. Um, or imitation is a wrong word, but it's inspired by Notre Dame, certainly. It's, That's it's, right. So that, that really spoke to me, too. It's like, oh, okay, uh, we, we are in a, in a cathedral, but where the, 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 uh, the architecture of that cathedral really heightens that vertical element. And then, of course, the vertical element is the story right of Jacob's dream uh, and um, so uh, it uh, because the Jacob's dream is about moving uh, 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 seeing these angels move up and down between heaven and earth and hopefully that's part of what people get from from Jacob's dream is this passage between heaven and earth which is what it, a church is right so those angels um are, I think they're swimmers, right? They're children. Um, I, I believe there was, um, well, actually to refresh my memory, what, what movements um, of people did you film in order to get that imagery into the work? Well, I mean, I, um, I'll just add a personal note that one of the other personal things for me in this is that I had uh, this unique experience of uh, being in zero G, in the zero gravity. I took one of these planes that goes up and then goes down and then for like a minute, uh, you're uh, uh, weightless. And so that was a very strong impression I <laughs> had. Uh, in fact, it's, uh, it was an amazing, uh, another metaphysical moment. So um, 
one of the things that I was thinking is, is there any way we can uh, not only see people climbing and, and falling, but also see them kind of hovering as they would say in zero gravity. So the natural way to do that was to shoot people uh, underwater. In fact, astronauts do uh, 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 practice sometimes underwater. And then also um, I did a fair amount of trampoline um, and uh, uh, to again, get that moment where you're floating up and then falling down. Um, and most of these people that you're seeing are family and friends uh, who have volunteered to go uh, into the swimming pool or on the front. So. Um, Jim, you often talk about how much you enjoy or how, um, how my, I guess my word would be compelling. Um, it is to show imagery in low resolution. Can you talk about how that came into Jacob's dream? Um, working in low resolution, I guess the first thing that comes to mind is that uh, the viewers need to use more of their imagination um, to fill in what's not there, what's not being shown in the resolution and the details. Um, the particular structure of the ladder, we, um, I had one um, uh, precedent for that, a previous work that I had done in Hong Kong on a building where there was a lot of um, information or resolution in the horizontal dimension, but not in the vertical dimension. And I thought when I started the project in Hong Kong, it was the, the structure was already there. I was just doing imagery for it that um, I wouldn't be able to do anything that would be readable because there was so much, little information in that direction. Um, and I was happy to see that one could do a lot with that kind of structure. And so that's part of the reason that we knew from the beginning that the experiment would probably work. Um, and certainly adding the color to the, um, uh, to the rungs of the ladder makes the image um, more readable. And, um, and again, one of the unique things about the ladder relative to resolution and perception is that there are really two places that it's uh, very readable. One, one of those is very far away. And then the second one is very close when you're looking kind of straight up at it and it all kind of fills in. Um, and that's uh, unique for kind of uh, low resolution stuff, which usually becomes completely abstract when you're close to it. Yeah, and I just want to say, I've added numbers to that, it's like, when you're talking low, low, low resolution, you know, they're 48 runs. That's 48 pixels. That's a very, very low resolution to convey the verticality. And um, so we were talking about that yesterday. It's amazing that the lowest re resolution is for that vertical movement, which is so essential to the case. Yeah, I, um, I do think it, it continues to be mesmerizing years later and um, even if, even though the cathedral's um, closed right now, um, it won't be for long. It won't be forever. And when we open it back up, I think it it will mean something again and mean something different. Um, what do you, what do you think about that? Do you think the work has changed meaning or is about to change meaning, given the transformation we're in right now and a reopening that's going to have a new context? I think that, uh, um, you know, to go back to the metaphysical moment that we've all lived in and lived through and that you guys are still living through, um, I'm hoping that we're all, um, uh, we, 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 that, there, that the, this notion of, of this kind of uh, vertical movement uh, is, uh, is something that's easier to apprehend now having lived through what we've lived through. And that's a real question. Does what we have, has what we have lived through not only uh, been a, an, an incredible moment, but is that something that is going to stay with us? 
Right. And, and I guess how maybe this is a little easier just to take this back a little bit, but <laughs> what kind of, what kind of work are you doing right now? Um, if any work, maybe, maybe you're taking a pause. Um, but is this moment in time affecting any of the work that you're doing right now? If you're working on art. I've, I've kind of been going in two directions. One is I've actually been getting typically a lot more work done because my studio has been closed. And so I haven't been managing as much. That's kind of more the, the software side or the computer side. Secondarily, it's been a very complicated um, uh, process to try to understand what may, would make what makes sense and what has made sense to put up on the Salesforce tower. Um, needless to say, there have been a lot of uh, requests for putting different things up on the tower relating to the COVID nineteen, and um, I've certainly had a lot of ideas and it's been a very complicated process to figure out and understand what makes the most sense for me as an artist for the building as part of the city um etc to display up on top of the tower um and so we have come we did come up with a couple ideas and produce those um and put them up uh, two or three different things. I, maybe you saw there for a while there were um, Buddhist prayer flags up and also um, clapping hands for the healthcare workers. And, I saw the uh, clapping and, and I have been really fascinated by this um, because I think I recall, well, what, you know, what is the, what what <laughs> what is your agreement with um, how the tower works with your art? Because um, with the filming that's happening in the city every day and the uploading, obviously clapping hands is very different from that. So how how have uh, how do you see the tower now? And did that change because of COVID, or has it been changing gradually? You got two hours. <laughs> yeah, I was wondering. I'm really glad you brought it up because I've been thinking about it, and I and um, I want you know it's one of the most visible pieces of art in the San Francisco Bay Area. Right. Um, it's 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 it rides this weird line, except it doesn't ride the line. It's on both sides of it, between being a a, a display for the city and. Uh, an individual's artwork and th th those kind of from what i can tell uh don't mesh with each other um uh tip uh, i'll give you an example um there has been uh people have asked um that i put up all of the names of the people who have passed from covid in the bay area put their names up on the building. Um, and um, more recently, I've been asked to put up protest related imagery. Um, and so these, again, it's profoundly complicated and there are kind of no answers to try to figure out um, what I should be putting up there. Part of, to be really honest, part of me wants to say, uh, give it to the city, whatever that means, and say, look, if you want to use this as a, a city kind of uh, bulletin board, um, it's yours. <laughs> um, but um, don't necessarily ask me to put the 49ers colors up when they win. Mm -hmm. so. Well, I guess I don't, I don't envy you. Um, <laughs> those are really important questions and it's an important, you know, it's an important time to be communicating. So maybe going away from the Salesforce tower, which 
is sort of uniquely one of the things that you are thinking about and affects a lot of people. Why, why is art important right now, especially in times like these? I think art, when it's successful, um, makes you, well, there's two things, sorry. There's what I get from it, which is kind of the, uh, therapeutic is the wrong word, but the process of uh, thinking deeper about where we're at and what I might want to express about that. That's kind of my personal response in terms of, what's going on right now with regard to art for the uh community um i think it can kind of um be an aid to introspection right now i guess um it's it's slightly it's a, it, again it's an interesting time which relates to what i was talking about a few minutes ago in that generally um, uh, particularly with the very recent events in conjunction with the uh, COVID-19 uh, tragedy uh, that's going on around the world. Um, I think that a lot of art that um, people are doing and that I've had been thinking about feels a little irrelevant right now. And so um, to, to uh, take that in a different direction, um, but that doesn't necessarily mean that me personally, that I uh, am an artist that can think about the issues that are going on right now and present those in an artwork because it's not necessarily the way that I normally think about things. I don't know if that's clear at all, but um, so it's a, it's a difficult time in terms of relevance and it's a difficult time in terms of what makes sense to work on, I think. Um, I guess I, you know, I, I second that emotion. One of the things that I really like about Jim's art and kind of drew me back to, to, to collaborations with him is that I feel that Jim uh, is uh, um, a poet in that he does paintings about the invisible. And uh, I think that that's what we need uh, desperately and that we had a taste of during the confinement is that we need to go vertical. We need to be metaphysical. We need to uh, evoke the invisible, whatever that means to, to each of us. Uh, because I think that that is this face-to-face uh, -face with, with COVID and so on is really face-to-face -face with mortality and so on. And certainly this face-to-face uh, -face that we're having with the uh, American tragedy unfolding in front of us uh, is, I think, uh, 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 is the occasion for a going vertical. And for for uh, doing lots of uh, portraits of the invisible. That actually sounds really hopeful. So, you know, I, we can all hope that art continues to be a great source for hope, and I think it is. What's personally giving you joy and hope right now? Uh, as an artist or just in just uh, well actually as, a, as an artist because uh, there are other things that uh, of course uh, but uh, as an artist I am really um, I'm very excited about the work that Jim is helping me do in, with color uh, I, um, I think that color is um, you know, Jim was saying earlier that with very few pixels, the fact that you have color uh, 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 almost gives you more resolution than you really than you really have. Um, you know, uh, for example, in Jacob's Dream, skin tone uh, uh, gives a lot of information and gives a lot of emotion. And I think that color, like light, uh, kind of speaks directly to the soul. And there's something really 
you know, miraculous and, and magical about color. And if we are able to find tools that allow us to see colors that we can't see normally with light or up to now, expand the things that we can see with color. And I think uh, it's an incredible, uh, very promising thing. So wrapping up and kind of thinking on um, where we are right now and, and how you've experienced the cathedral. And I really appreciate that you talked about the community um, that you joined when you became our artist in residence, um, because you really did. I mean, you know, you were there working every day. You learned um, more about our congregation and our visitors and our schools. It was so great to have you there and then that this magnificent work of art was left behind and lives today is such an honor for the cathedral. You know, we're grateful for you every day. Um, the question would be, what are your, what are your thoughts or what advice do you have for our next artist in residence? <laughs> Am I a hard interviewer? Um, no, I, 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 my first answer I, seems like you have already gone in the, in that direction, and um, my first answer is someone people who work with light, and you, you've certainly tended to do that, and I think that's really smart for your space and what you are, both the community and the fact that it's a cathedral. So you're doing it. <laughs> and I guess I would just add, Benjamin. What we just said, which is, uh, meet uh, meet the kids in the school. Like that was great. I think Rebecca organized that, and that was fantastic, wasn't it, Jim? Uh, the other thing, as I was invited to talk to the yoga uh, people before they started, <laughs> was also an amazing moment. So yeah, I, I would also encourage them to you know, meet the kids, talk to the yoga people as well as. as and in terms of encouragement, I would add that Benjamin and I have just brought this up recently also that, and I'm sure this has happened with you, Catherine, there's nothing like spending basically all night in the church, in the cathedral alone. I think we feel very lucky that, um, that you've continued to show the work and that people get to see it. So I think we're the ones who <laughs> feel gratitude. And we're surprised, actually. We, we, that is, we're surprised it's still there. 